One day, one of you is going to want to sing. One day, one of you is going to want to learn how to make your own song. And you're going to have to know. But if you don't take this, you won't know. You'll never know how to talk our language. Our language is at the brink of extinction. We're losing a lot of our people that know how to talk fluently. We've only got so many more speakers left, so many more knowledge keepers left. What happens when we go? What happens when we pass away? I would love to see our children grow, know the history of their families, know the history of the, the band, the tribe. Being new channels, that's who we are. You know, we're caring, we're loving people, you know, we're, we're about one another and not just ourselves. We're strong, uh, persevering people. And even today, we're fighting for our land, for our rights, for our sovereignty. Uh, New Channel is a amalgamation of tribes on the West Coast, but the translation for that is people along the mountains. Uh, the, one of our biggest things is our backyard is the mountains, our front yard is the ocean, and, you know, we take care of it. Well, territories was always important to our people. The area is pretty pristine compared to a lot of other areas. We don't have road access in straight into Kayukit. We have to take a boat ride up to Pearl Harbor to, to um, get to here. We do what we have to do to live out here. As we did for thousands of years. And it's, it's peaceful to the point where you're just like, you never want to leave. and. You're so used to the quiet, you're so used to hearing the water, you're so used to hearing the birds chirp in the morning, and it's just so peaceful. We have a connection to the water because we always lived beside. Having fish, it's a way of life for us. It feeds us, it supports us, and we understand that it's the beginning of life for a lot of things, and it's the end of life for a lot of things too. Well, we're fishing with rods. Uh, we got a flasher on each line there, and we set it up with a, with a clip. As soon as you start to feel the fish and get a nice big bend in it, then you set the hook on it and then reel on it and let the fish do what it needs to do. Fishing has always been a part of my life. Fishing has always been a part of my dad's life. Fishing has always been a part of his dad's life. I'm also a fisherwoman. I uh, provide for my family. Since 1987, there was never a year where I missed going fishing. I fish every year. how to smoke fish, jar fish. Oh, to 
we're not the only ones on this land. We share the land with the animals and we're living on their land. We have to respect mother nature, respect the animals, and it's a balance. I like to say Nichonal people are planners. So when we harvest foods, any kind of foods, we pay our respects, we make sure that we only take what we need because we are planning for the future and future generations. All right, so today we are picking heart-shaped leaves. One of the practices that we do beforehand is we say a prayer. We say a prayer to the forest, thanking the trees for the medicine, thanking the plants for the medicine, giving an offering. So the way, reason why we're doing this is we're showing respect to the Mother Earth. So why kosh na sashlapi hot wash? Why kosh na sashlapi hot wash? Hoopi in hashlapi hot wash? Hoopi in ta'ilsh? Ta'ilsh? Hoopi in machtakshiklitz? Eko, eko. The leaves that we're picking today, you guys have been picking throughout the year. There are these, these are called false lily of the valley. But this is called o'ye. Can you guys say that? O'ye. Medicine. O'ye. So this stuff, it helps with pain. Like if you have sore body or like you're growing, this stuff's really good for it. So that's what we're harvesting. So you guys are going to be in teams. So let's get picking. What kind of plant do you think that is? Yeah, it's a thimble berry bush. We harvest trees that the branches are all growing on the other side of the hill. So this is a perfect tree to harvest. And we wait until after rainfall because the log becomes really damp and waterlogged. Now you are going to pull it this way, this way. Side to side? Yep, side to side. There you go. Okay, keep going, pull really hard. There you go. This much. I feel it's important for mm -hmm. this practice to be handed down to another generation and to keep continuing so that we don't lose our, our way of telling our way of telling stories. We carve a totem po the totem poles to tell stories. Everything has a story to it. When I'm carving, I, I, uh, I feel like I'm meditating. I don't have a whole lot of things on my mind other than concentrating on what I'm doing. It's a spiritual thing in, that I feel inside of me. This is part of my life. This is who I am. This is where I come from. Before I went to residential school, I was being taught by the elders and that was taken away from me when I was shipped a hundred miles away from my home. And I had no one to teach me. Uh, it wasn't taught in the schools. There was no books on the subject or anything. So I didn't have any any mentors or, or someone to look up to, to to teach me these things.
because we all leave the uh, um, residential school feeling we can't do this, we can't do that, because we were taught that we're not allowed to do these things. We weren't allowed to think for ourselves. I'm a residential survivor. I was taken away at the age of five from a house at, and I went to the Christie Residential School. It's not something they're just reading about, it is something that happened. Education is important and every birthday is important to me because I didn't have that. The, the generational traumas that have occurred with residential school, uh, the amount of loss of traditions and culture and language that has happened uh, where people were shamed or guilted or uh, criminally punished for practicing any of those things. Because they were forced to go there, they were locked up there, they weren't allowed to leave, their parents weren't allowed to visit, my dad and them, you know, he wasn't even allowed to say hi to his own brothers and sisters in there, you know, and struggling to survive in, the, in the, that environment, surviving residential school. I was 11 when I went to a residential school, and residential schools and the schools that we had here forcing this English on us, you know, and making, trying to make us forget our language. I thought about all the abuse I got and it was as I grew older and older I started forgetting the words. It was lost within schools. Allow them. Allow them to relearn within the school systems. So my main role in this school is teaching culture and language. Katza. Quick, 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 quick. Klu. Klu. Pa. Klu pa. Our ancestors would be so proud of them to see where they're at now, to hear them speak. And I really, truly hope that they, these children will keep it going, keep it alive. They're going to be in need for a language teacher when I leave. The students here get about one to two hours of, of exposure to language every week, doing different programs, different lessons around things that they're interested in. Eat skin. Cho. Good job. I find that when we practice our culture and language, that it fills their spirit and it's part of who they are. It's part of who I am. Not having an education stood in my way probably more so than anything else. When I learned how to read and write, when I got an education, that helped me to be able to uh, function in society, to be able to function in, uh, even more effective with my family. So the value of school in the, its very simplest form is that, like it's being able to communicate on another level. Uh, education gives us that kind of freedom. I think if we uh, focus on our education that we have now, we can identify ways that our traditions and our culture fit with that. And this is one of the biggest things about our teachings is that when we're teaching someone, we have the word that we use is called ha-hook. And when we practice the songs and dances, as we're taught, as we're ha -hook, we're to lift somebody. You should feel stronger. You should feel braver. You should feel more committed to who you are. Not to be afraid to express yourself in front of anybody, no matter what it is that you're expressing. And when we practice our, our traditions, our songs and our dances, it does that. But as long as we're grasping at a, an education system that has no room to 
allow us to practice our own identity, to practice our our own existence. And if you don't allow that, then you're not you're never going to achieve the highest standards possible. It's never going to happen because if you don't allow people to be who they really are, you can't. That potential has just been snuffed out. We allow that piece of ourselves to drop away, and we can't afford that. We can't afford to pretend that we are not who we are. At the very base of it, I think, I think it's if we don't help our students to realize their real identity, we're never going to reach their full potential. Carrying forward what we need to for our, our children and our future so that we keep our identity. Uh, our culture and our language and our songs is our identity. If I don't carry it on and if I don't learn it, then it's going to be lost after me. We can't lose it. Otherwise, otherwise the churches win, the governments win.